November 9th in Nashville, the 10th ranked USC Trojans are in town to take on the 2-1 Vanderbilt Commodores. It's SEC Network Basketball from Memorial Gym with Dane Bradshaw. I'm Taylor Zarzer. You look at Andy Enfield and his USC Trojans. He got a terrific performance from Benny Boatwright against North Dakota State on Monday night. Boatwright is playing the best basketball of his career. He's healthier than he was a year ago. He's in better shape than he was a year ago. And he's an added new dimension to his game. No longer just a three-point shooter, but getting himself into the paint. The Bison had the lead. They were up five with under 10 minutes to go in that game. And he went off 28 points, 10 for 17 from the field. Eight rebounds included three blocks tonight. This first time that the 10th-ranked Trojans have been ranked this high in the preseason since 1974. And it's their first trip to Nashville since 1975. Glad you're with us here on a Sunday night for some great college basketball. KB Burdett, Brian Shea, and Anthony Jordan are tonight's officials. We'll show you the starting lineups in just a few minutes. As you see, we're just about ready for the tip tonight between SC and Vanderbilt, Matu and Obina to jump. And Vanderbilt gets the basketball first. Jeff Roberson gets control of it. Three straight double doubles. Freshman Saban Lee works it around the horn. He got his first start on Friday night. Leads the team in assists in the first three games. Had five on Friday in the victory over UNC Asheville. Clock is expiring, just two seconds left on the clock. Lee gets off a shot, but it's blocked. And it's a shot clock violation on Vanderbilt to start the game. That is a textbook defensive possession. No better way to start the game on defense than the Trojans did. Look at those Wooden Award preseason players. Two of them and a Naismith Trophy watch list participant in Benny Boatwright. Tons of NBA scouts here tonight, primarily to watch guys like Boatwright. Elijah Stewart's off-balance shot is no good, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. Andy with Saban Lee, the true freshman in the backcourt. Fisher Davis, Lachance, Roberson, the three seniors on the team, and Obina, the center, will split some time tonight with Jerry Baptiste. Fisher Davis drawing the foul there. And first point of the game goes to Elijah Stewart. Needs two more for 1,000 in his career. And sitting on 9.99. The Trojans known for their football program, won the Pac-12 South, ranked 11th in the country after the win against UCLA last night. How about the basketball team being ranked ahead of them at 10th hasn't happened many times. That's a walk charged on Lee. It's a terrific defensive position there by Jordan McLaughlin. Saban Lee, a very talented and promising freshman for Vanderbilt, but he's going to have his hands full tonight with the veteran from USC. Two possessions, two turnovers so far for Vandy. McLaughlin into the paint, and that's a walk. Jamezi Matu takes too many steps, and Vandy gets it back. Andy Enfield in his fifth season at USC. School record 26 wins last year in a trip to the round of 32 before he lost to Scott Drew, Bryce's brother, and the Baylor Bears. Lee with 10 on the shot clock, gives up the three, instead passes off on the and the shot by McLaughlin is up and good. Jordan McLaughlin, the senior, gets Vandy their first bucket. Correction, make that Roberson. Jeff Roberson, of course, a senior from Houston, Texas, with three straight double doubles for him for Vandy. Now in the paint, wide open on the back door is Elijah Stewart, and he's over 1,000 career points. Coach Drew's looking to his bench right now because Matthew Fisher Davis has to be locked in. Trying to get his attention to detail and sense of urgency when he plays has been a challenge throughout his career, and it's possessions like that that can cost the team a ball game. He tries to dump it off to Obina, and that's the third turnover. Here's the last possession for USC. When you're trying to take away the three-point shot that Stewart has, 
Teams can tend to overplay. It's a tough cover move. Fisher Davis has to be down in a stance and whip that head around and deflect the backdoor pass. Nine of SC's players are from the Los Angeles area. Stewart moved there from Louisiana as a child. Boatwright loses the dribble, gives it up into the hole. Stewart reverse Leia, no good, but it's tipped up by Matu. What Coach Drew tells before the game, if they're going to pull off an upset, they've got to do the little things and win the 50-50 balls. Keep them off the glass. So far, they have not been able to do that. Foul inside. Bryce Drew in his second season, 19 and 16 last year, went to the NCAA tournament despite that record because they had the nation's toughest schedule. Played 11 tournament teams. Three of their top four scorers are back this year, but six newcomers, and he said he's still searching for this team's identity. And that's the tough balance of going at a pace that's good enough for the newcomers, not putting too much on them at the same time, but still not letting the newcomers hold the seniors back. And the seniors have to lead by example. They've got some good leaders in Riley, the chance, and Roberson. Roberson over to Fisher Davis, and the three is no good. Rebounded by Stewart. Oh, right. Fans wanted a walk. Matu tries to make the move with the left hand. It's no good. Rebounded by the doors. Larry Austin Jr. now off the bench tries to push it. Doesn't have numbers, but draws the foul. Larry Austin Jr., the junior from Springfield, Illinois, who transferred from Xavier, sat out last year. He did start the first two games of the season. And Bryce Drew says he brings some energy off the bench. And while he didn't start last game, he did finish. Where Saban Lee, again, very productive on the offensive end, but towards the end of the game against UNC Asheville, it was the poise of Austin Jr., the defense and the decision making that helped Vanderbilt pull off the close win. First foul on the two, as you see Bryce Drew there. One of the best basketball families in the country. And Austin one for two from the line. You had us all feeling old earlier when you said it's 20, been 20 years since when? Can you believe that since the Bryce Drew shot against Ole Miss in the NCAA tournament? It'll be the 20-year anniversary coming up in March. One of those moments as a sports fan, you remember where you were when that shot happened. The chance in the corner. Fisher Davis got it. And the streak continues. 1,003 consecutive games for Vanderbilt hitting a three-pointer. They've hit one in every game since it was implemented in 1987. Only two other programs have done the other way, and that's a triple for McLaughlin. He prefers to drive in the basket, make plays for others, but if you go under the screen, he is deadly from beyond the arc. Maybe trying to answer. No good. 9-6 Trojans with this early lead. Just over four minutes in. Boatwright tries to get a step. Fade away, no good. Rebounded by the Commodores. That's Baptiste off the bench. On the other end, Boatwright's not going to amaze you with his athletic ability. So Roberson does a nice job despite being undersized, making it tough, using his speed to his advantage on the defensive end despite the lack of height. Fisher Davis tries to get a step, and we've got a foul on the floor. Timeout, 15-23 to go in the first half. Vandy continues the streak, but the Trojans answer on the other end early on in Nashville. Six Trojans here in Nashville on a Sunday night for some college basketball. Tenth-ranked Trojans against the Vanderbilt Commodores with Dane Bradshaw. I'm Taylor Zarzer. Dane Bryce Drew's team last year started off slowly, sort of like this season. They lost to Belmont earlier this week, so they've been in this position before. When you have a challenging schedule, you're making yourself susceptible to losing games. And there's no shame in losing at Belmont the way Vanderbilt did because most coaches would never go play at Belmont. In fact, from a Power 5 school, they never have. But when you got a guy like Bryce Drew, came from Valparaiso and knows what it's like to not have any of those big time teams and the Goliaths being willing to take a chance to come play on your home court, that's what can happen. But as a result, last year, they continue to get better within each game, 
throughout the course of the year, and their strength of schedule and their quality wins is what put them in the NCAA tournament field with this opportunity tonight to an assembly uh, chance. Back door is open, is off the bench. Joe Toy scores, and it's 9-8 Trojans. And to your point, Dane, it's one thing to go play Belmont on their campus. It's on top of that, Rick Bird is a legend. He's one of the best coaches in college basketball, and Bryce Drew told us that he had the best attendance the program has ever had. Good pass inside, extra pass to Matu. It's 11-8. Well, Vanderbilt's going to double the post at times. And when they do there, if you're going to come over to help, you have to get in front of that big man despite the size. Good chance. Gives it up to Baptiste. There's a back out, and that's going to be a walk. Turnover for Vanderbilt. It's their fourth. Said in the open, Vanderbilt still searching for their starting lineup. They've tried a few different rotations so far at the beginning of the season. Understandable that that's a work in progress. Pass into Matu with the right hand. It's no good. Rebounded by Roberson, and they push it. Bounce pass. Baptiste off the glass. Very positive sign from Vanderbilt that Joe Toy has come in the game and given them two back-to-back -back positive possessions. This is a young man that had a slow start last year but came on strong late. Speaking of coming on strong, Jordan McLaughlin, man, he is tough. All Pac-12 freshman in 2015, shoulder injury limited him, but since then, he's been dynamite. Turnover, but saved by Roberson. Skip pass to the chance. And that's what Roberson does. On most teams, that's going the other way. Roberson gets every 50 50 ball. Chance. Trapped in the corner, gets out of it. Austin with five on the clock. Puts it up, no good. Vote right with the rebound. Trojans up four. Most teams in the country would give anything just to have Thornton or McLaughlin on their team. USC's out there with both point guards. Makes them extremely tough to cover. Way out there, Boatwright misses. Cleared the other way, coast to coast with the left hand. How about that finish there? As Vanderbilt's Larry Austin Jr. comes off the bench, it's 14 to 12. Balance shot, collects no iron. Boy, it's just too careless. Almost I mean, you got to get two hands on the ball. That's fundamentals. A chance. Gives it up. Roberson, or rather, Austin Leaner is no good. And the put back in. He has given them a spark off the bench. This Vanderbilt Time crowd out, is alive. USC. Yeah, listen to this crowd with 12.24 to go in the first half. Vanderbilt Commodores underdogs to the 10th ranked Trojans tonight, but tied. The Trojans tied with the Vanderbilt Commodores at 14 apiece. USC has been involved in this scandal that has hurt college basketball. Federal authorities named their associate head coach Tony Bland as one of 10 people facing federal charges in a corruption scheme. On that same day, the Trojans put him on administrative leave and he posted bail after being arrested in Tampa, Florida. November 7th, federal grand jury indicted Bland and seven, seven others. And then just last week, Bland pleaded not guilty to four conspiracy charges. Now, one of the players that has not been allowed to play due to eligibility concerns is that man, DeAnthony Melton, but Andy Enfield does believe he will be back soon. What a talent he is, terrific defender. And the whole thing is a shame because you have kids like Melton, and just in general across the landscape of college basketball programs involved. So often it's the adults in the situation that are causing the problems, and you have kids like Melton who love the game, just want to do what they've been doing their whole lives, which is help their team play basketball at a high level and they're forced to sit out. But as you said, Enfield is optimistic that he'll return very soon. Saban Lee gets trapped, kicks it out. Three-pointer by Roberson is good. That is a big-time mature play by Lee. 
a freshman going in under control, seeing that his shooter's on the wing. The whistle on the floor as Vanderbilt takes their first lead of the game Saban on this Lee. shot by Roberson. Yeah, he's still learning to play under control, and that's a sign of improvement quickly from one game to the next, and knowing that he has a shooter on his outside. Roberson with five early points. And as the Trojans try to kick it into Rakosovic. Almost saved, and instead a three on the way, no good. Rebounded by Vanderbilt. They've gotten back in this game with solid defense, forcing USC to take tough, contested shots. In the corner, trapped, kicked out by Maxwell Evans, and Vanderbilt will be able to reset with 15 on the shot clock. Will Evans and he turns it over. McLaughlin dumps it off and the bucket up and good as USC ends the streak. And that's part of experience too. I mean you've got to put these freshmen in and let them have baptism by fire but Evans has to be more careful with the basketball. That's Shaquan Aaron on that last basket for USC. 17-16 Vandy. And an offensive foul. That's a nice call by Anthony Jordan. Point of emphasis this year, called the first bump. USC sold it well, but officials are going to be on that. They're not going to, officials aren't going to let you just back your way in, Charles Barkley style with a bump, bump, bump. They're going to call the first one, and that one pretty blatant. That's Joe Toy's first foul. And the third team foul on Vanderbilt. Fisher Davis will check back in. After Vandy got some good work from its bench. We mentioned Squan Aaron just a second ago with the last bucket. That's those are the first bench points of the night for the Trojans. Only scored five on Monday night against North Dakota State. Step back jumper, no good off the mark. Missed by Derek Thornton, the Duke transfer. Now Vandy has hit five of their last seven field goals. Has it back. Brown back outside. Three off the mark, tipped around, and unable to save it is Maxwell Evans. I like the shot by Fisher Davis, though. You have a freshman guarding you. You're faster than him, so he's giving you a step. If they don't come up and crowd you, step up and pop it. Fisher Davis, one of the prettiest strokes in the country. Missed the Austin P game with an ankle injury. Still trying to feel, feel his way through that. He was 0 for 6 from the field against Belmont last Monday. But clearly one of the most important players in the Southeastern Conference, especially to Vanderbilt's success. Trying to make the move to the hole is Stewart. And they called the foul before the shot. Went over 1,000 points tonight, fifth all time in threes in USC history with, with 178. Foul charged on Obina, his first. Great test for both of these teams. Early in the season, they'll play each other again next year in Los Angeles in November. This for Kosovic. One-handed hook shot way too strong. We got a foul. Fisher Davis called for it. Fisher Davis gets tangled up. Let's see if it's intentional. Let's see if he was cheating a little bit, got wrapped up. Well, gosh, I, I think that's Aaron that really initiated that hook and hold right there, but that's a... That's a cagey veteran type play. I had plenty of guys do it to me too, where I got whistled for a foul. It reached that elbow underneath. And it's a big Tough call, call too because it's Fisher Davis' second foul. He gets the rebound here with a little frustration. A nice strong rebound by Fisher Davis, but Bryce Drew unhappy that Boatwright getting called for a push there for a little makeup call. The chance yet to score. Kicks it inside. And there's a foul. 
Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll have Thinking Out Loud presented by Regions Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk football and want your participation via social media and live call-ins throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. Rakosovic called for his first foul. That's the four-team foul on the Trojans. Over nine minutes left in the first half as Vandy swings around the perimeter with two seniors, Lachance and Fisher Davis. Into the paint, extra pass to Obina, who's trapped by three men, somehow gets it up. The freshman from Nigeria by way of Virginia Academy with the score, both right on the other end. Three is too strong, and we have a foul inside. USC is going to mix in some zone. If you're Vanderbilt and you're patient, run your offense. You can find some openings. Nice bounce pass by Cleveland Brown. Shooters run the outside, but Abina brings it up strong. And meanwhile, at the other end, after this Obina bucket. <laughs> Throws those elbows around a little bit, clear space pretty quickly. Rakosovic was called for his second foul. Fifteen, sixteen doors one of the best Trojan teams ever. Look at their history. This is clearly one of the five best teams they've ever had as there's a foul in, inside. Andy Enfield totally responsible for that. Two losing seasons his first two years, but consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament in years three and four. And as I said earlier, Dean, he had every chance to beat Baylor in the round of 32 to beat Bryce's brother Scott and get to the Sweet yeah. 16. We don't have enough time to go through his resume, but Google it if you're at home. I mean, this guy is a winner in everything he does, whether it's as a player, coach, businessman. It doesn't matter. Andy Enfield knows how to win. Levon Brown misses the bunny. Boatwright misses another three. Cleared by Obino. Boatwright is getting his field goal attempts, but they're being contested. That's exactly what Bryce Drew and his staff wanted. They said contested shots make it tough on him. looking for space, kicks it out. Fisher Davis inside the free throw line, splash. This the largest lead of the game for Vanderbilt. And you hear a little memorial magic for the first time tonight. And the two. Short. Fisher Davis from way outside, no good, but rebounded by Brown, and he's fouled. Fisher Davis shot that from Murfreesboro. Cleveland Brown rebounded, it got fouled, and Vandy with the early lead on the 10th-ranked Trojans. One of the best cities in the country. Down on Music Row here in Nashville, where the Doors have the early lead on the USC Trojans, and so far it's been their defense. Absolutely it has. They're forcing tough twos, and where USC is taller and has a height advantage, that's where Vanderbilt is playing a chess match using skill and lack of size and the quickness that comes with that to make it tough on guys like Boatwright and Metu down low. You see they've gone ice cold. In the last three and a half minutes plus, making one of their last 10 shots. And they're only shooting 31% from the floor so far. And a big part of that is they're not able to get out and transition. Vanderbilt hasn't taken care of the ball very well. Too many empty possessions, but not many live ball turnovers. Now, what's that mean? A live ball turnover is one where it's a steal going the other way. If they travel, throw it out of bounds, whatever it is, that's not a good thing, but at least you're taking the ball out of bounds. You have a chance to get your defense set, not allowing the Trojans to run it back down. Cleavon Brown, the sophomore from San Antonio at the free throw line. This shot no good. He had a career high 13 points in the opener against Austin P, a big recruit out of Texas two years ago. Makes the second, it's 22-16.
USC just three of 13 from the field in the last 18, in the last eight minutes. Well, this is the guy who the ball needs to be in the hands of McLaughlin. Get him into some pick and roll situation, go to work. Has it at the free throw line with a whistle inside. Wednesday, we'll have Fort Wayne taking on the seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats at Rupp Arena, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on the SEC Network. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. And Dane Bradshaw making another cameo appearance. That's right. I'm getting to see some pros and future draft picks here tonight. No shortage of them in Rupp Arena. We got a lot of scouts in here tonight watching this basketball game. Former Alabama and NC State basketball coach Mark Godfrey, though I know now is doing some Pro work for the Mavericks this year, so several others as Fisher Davis steals the inbounds pass. Fisher Davis, one of the three seniors for Vanderbilt. One guy from Vanderbilt that just hadn't gotten his touch is this guy right here, LeChance. And don't blink, you better stay on him, Stewart, because LeChance can burn you. 48% three-point shooter last season, and Riley hits his first tonight. It's a 15-2 run, that Mc and McLaughlin can't cut into it as Fisher Davis has another rebound. And we have an offensive foul. You just can't lose separation on Riley Chance. Stewart has done a nice job at the one dribble. Nice screen. Got to go over the top of that and can't get cut off. If you're the big man Metsu, you have to step up and get a hand up on the chance. Anytime he can get a clean look, he's gonna knock it down. Obina called for his second foul. So now Fisher Davis and Obina, two starters, both with two fouls. And SC will be in the bonus moving forward, but another turnover charge to the Trojans on a travel by Matu. USC just stagnant. They like to operate their offense out of that horns type look out of the high post with their big men who are very talented. He was looking for the post up a boat right, but Roberson just doing a really nice job of fronting, discouraging that pass. Fifth turnover on SC. Much better job by Stewart. Getting there on the catch against a big time shooter. Fisher Davis with a tough shot over Stewart. That goes in 25, 27, 16. Vanderbilt's up 11. Fisher Davis had the one poor defensive play early on getting back door, but he has had his head in the game since on both ends of the floor. Boat right. Back out to McLaughlin, and it, that three is off the front rim. Oh, Trojans ice cold shooting tonight. Austin pushes and gets fouled. Not only are they ice cold, but they're, they're one and done, most importantly. And the fact that Vanderbilt is taking care of the defensive glass, not allowing any second opportunities. Laughlin charged with his first foul. Vanderbilt in the bonus. Austin back to the free throw line. Sociology major misses it. that Bryce Drew so far this season is going with a pretty strong nine or ten man rotation. And on the other end, Chuck O'Bannon Jr. comes in the game for USC, a guy that did not play in the last game. The McDonald's All-American, four state titles at Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas. Bishop Gorman, what a program. They've got six consecutive. Former teammate of mine, C.J. Watson, NBA player from Bishop Gorman as well. The two, that's too strong. Put back is up and it's good. Jonah Matthews ends the scoring drought as they score their first point in almost six minutes. The reason Vanderbilt, there's a reason Vanderbilt likes to put Roberson in the middle of that zone. This is decision making as I jinx him when he gets the ball in the heart of the defense as a passer, shooter, and distributor. Eighth turnover on Vanderbilt. Boat right over to Chuck O'Bannon, but that back to the top of the key now. 
Matthews, bounce pass to Matu, tries to get a step and flush, and it's no good, goes out of bounds. Boy, 12 for Vanderbilt. Good defense, but I know he was saying his prayers as <laughs> Matu went up in there because that one would have been a top 10. Seven of 24 from the field, the chance way too strong. Great effort there by Jerry Baptiste, but out of bounds back to the Trojans. Bad possession there for Vanderbilt, but again, a dead ball situation out of it. Not allowing USC to get in any type of rhythm, which is what North Dakota State was able to do as well. Control tempo of that game to keep it close with the Trojans. Yeah, the SC's been in this position. They were in it Monday night, trailed by double digits in the first half. Matu with a couple of spins, it's no good. Rebounded inside by Roberson. Fisher Davis for three. Yes, sir. The Vanderbilt Commodores are feeling it early on, up 13. Matthew Fisher Davis has helped Vanderbilt lead USC by 13. Doors are four of eight from three. We, all know, last one. we all know Fisher Davis can shoot the rock. The new element to this game is driving in, pull up. And when he can be a threat from two, all that's going to do is make life easier from the three-point line where if you don't get a hand up in a hurry, it's money every time. Of course, Fisher Davis, part of that heartbreaking finish to the season in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, the foul towards the end of the game, miscommunication between coach and player, heartbreak, but team supported them. They've moved on. He's Bryce Drew's been really good for Fisher Davis, and he's accepted coaching. Fisher Davis is a guy that can make it look easy as a player because he's really talented. But he can also look like he's taking it easy. And it's hard to decipher sometimes which is which. But we're seeing him at his best right now. Jordan McLaughlin very quickly out of the timeout with a nice shot off the glass. 31-20 now the score. Vanderbilt up 11. This is Roberson blocked inside by Rakosovic out of bounds. And Vandy will keep it. Kosovic, the sophomore from Chicago, sprained his ankle in that North Dakota State game. Enfield says he's fine tonight. A chance somehow gets open in the corner and makes him pay. Beautiful pass by Fisher Davis. Nice set play. USC fell asleep. You can't forget about the man in the corner. About the last man in the country you want to leave open from three. Both right trap. Hand off to Boatwright, and that's Benny's first three. He was 0 for 4 from the field before that shot. And again, 28 points on Monday, first three of the game tonight. <laughs> Davis into Roberson. And dribbled it off his foot. Coming up on the college basketball halftime report, Trevor Scales and Seth Greenberg preview the PK-80 tournament. We'll have a look at the NIT season tip-off that Vanderbilt's competing in and have first half stats and highlights. Maybe five of nine from three so far in this one. Both of these teams set school records in three-pointers made last year Vanderbilt by a substantial margin, almost 50 more than USC. Had one of the best three-point shooting seasons of anyone in the country as Boatwright has hit his last two. And neither team can get comfortable with a lead because of shooting like that. Terrific play, McLaughlin, the senior guard, stretches the defender over, leaving Boatwright open. When you have a pick-and-pop big man like that, just so hard to defend. Saban Lee, over to Joe Toy, now the chance with just five on the shot clock. Pass inside, Baptiste, offensive foul. 
as good as Vanderbilt has played tonight, the biggest concern is their turnovers and empty possessions. Here's another one that's now their 10th of the game. And for Baptiste, that's his first foul. And if you're Baptiste, if you get it that low, you don't need to dip the shoulder. That was terrific post position. You were already where you wanted to be underneath the basket. No need for the extra reinforcement. It's a Prestonwood Christian High School in Texas, but grew up in Haiti and speaks four languages, hopes to be a diplomat in his native country at some point in the next handful of years. McLaughlin other way, and the three is good, and the Trojans have hit their last three well, from Van downtown. Vanderbilt's living and dying by going under that ball screen. It's a really simple play for USC. McLaughlin has the ball in his hands. If you go under, I'm shooting. If you go over the top, I'm driving. 11 points for SC since infield called that timeout. Willis to Toy with four on the shot clock, and we have a travel. Doors offense getting bogged down at the perimeter suddenly with 1.23 to go in the first half. Vandy's up five. Vandy calls a timeout. They called, they changed that last shot to a three, so that's actually, that's two threes in a row for SC and the lead down to five. The NIT season tip-off begins Thursday with Virginia taking on Vanderbilt at 4 Eastern, then Rhode Island against Seton Hall at 6. Catch all the action from the Barclays Center on Thursday on ESPNU and the ESPN app. Dane, how much did you gain from playing in these holiday tournaments early in the season? Um, some horrible Thanksgiving experiences. <laughs> we had a preseason NIT tip-off. It's awesome. You're, you're in New York. It's over Thanksgiving. And then we lost two games in a row. But in terms of getting some tournament experience, that is a big part of it. Back-to-back -back games, quick scouting reports, turnarounds. And that, that's something that coaches love to have that opportunity. Not that it has the same intensity as March Madness, but that tournament setting is a learning experience for the players. 9-0 run, make it 12-0. From the corner, Shaquan Aaron for three. It's real simple. I mean, if you give up open threes and you can't get a shot up on the other end, you're asking for a big-time run against a team like USC. And he just barely gets it across the timeline. And this is where, if you're Vanderbilt, who's your guy to stop the bleeding? They have a lot of really good players, but I'm not sure they have that go-to guy that says, we're going to you for a bucket. Austin gives up a wide-open look. And the shot clock expires again. Willis and Toy had a chance there at open looks, but didn't see them. That's the 12th turnover in the first half on Vanderbilt. And Taylor, I'm not sure when the last field goal attempt they had. I mean, it's chargers, it's turnovers, it's shot clock violations. But a big part of that is they're not able to get anything in the half court set. They've been more productive when they can get stops and get into a rhythm with the transition game, letting that flow into their half court offense. Just a couple minutes ago, this lead was 14. It's down to two. And there's basically no difference between game and shot clock here. The Trojans can hold for the final possession of the first half. Just because it's a zone doesn't mean you can't still run some ball screen offense. And so expect them to do some ball screen. There it is. Try to get something open. Laughlin, now the three on the way is good. Jonah Matthews gives USC the lead, and they close the half on a 15-0 run. Vanderbilt in total control for about the first 17 minutes, but the Trojans come storming back to take a one-point lead into the break. If I'm not mistaken, this 15-0 run has been five threes by different players on the court. McLaughlin always making the right decision at the end of the buzzer. USC 35, Vandy 34. We're back with the SEC College Basketball Halftime Report after these messages. 
Welcome back to Nashville. SEC teams are in some great tournaments during Feast Week, and it includes the Vanderbilt Commodores. We'll get to them in just a minute. First, the Legends Classic in Brooklyn, Texas A&M is in that. That starts Monday. Maui Invitational with LSU also starts on Monday. The Battle for Atlantis, Paradise Island with Tennessee starts Wednesday in the Phil Knight 80, the PK 80 in Portland with Florida and Arkansas starts on Thursday. Of course, we know about Robert Williams at Texas A&M, but Tremont Waters, a freshman for LSU at point guard, has really been putting on a show. But what I'm hoping to see, I'm allowed to look ahead because I'm not a team member, but Arkansas Razorbacks with a potential rematch against North Carolina in round two of that tournament. See if they can get a little bit of revenge for the NCAA tournament. Of course, Vandy's heading to New York City for Thanksgiving, playing Virginia on Thursday. How about the commitment made here? Got it done. USC closes the first half on a third 15 nothing run to enjoy a 35-34 lead as we get ready for the second half here in Nashville, Tennessee with my friend Dane Bradshaw. I'm Taylor Zarzer and Vanderbilt was in total control of that game for about the first 17 minutes, then couldn't even get a shot off in the last three. They did everything right in the first half except take care of the basketball. Too many empty possessions is what allowed USC to stay in this game, and then they compiled those problems on the offensive end by leaving way too many shooters open on the other end with USC a dangerous three-point shooting team. We knew both teams were deadly from beyond the arc, and early in the first half, it was LaChance. It was Fisher Davis and Vanderbilt having their way, but eventually they lost track of the shooters for USC, whether it was McLaughlin, Boatwright, and then Matthews towards the end of the half with a big time play at the buzzer to give USC the lead heading into the, into the locker room. USC shooting 42%, Vandy and terrific 59%. And you see the three point field goal shooting with SC on fire to close the frame. And the points off turnovers as well, last 33 of the first half, Vanderbilt didn't even get a shot off. That's incredible. I mean, turnover after turnover, whether a shot clock violation, a travel, or a charge, this Vanderbilt team has to get more production out of their offense. So somehow the Trojans with the lead, it was so we get ready for the start of the second half. Again, this is USC's first trip to Vanderbilt since 1975. Playing Bryce Drew and the Commodores tonight. USC leads the series 4-1, to one, but no games since that meeting in Nashville some 42 years ago. And again, it's a home-and-home home that Coach Drew and Enfield have scheduled. Bryce said they've been friends for quite some time. Of course, Bryce's brother Scott and the Baylor Bears beat. Coach Enfield and the Trojans in the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. First shot of the second half by Matthews, no good. And a two with the follow, and the Trojans are up three. And if you're Bryce Drew at halftime, you have to address the situation that we talked about with the turnovers taking care of the basketball. But on the other side, you got to say, hey, guys, this is a top 10 team in the country. We are right there with them. We can win this game if we take care of things that we can control, which is taking care of the basketball. So a sloppy start there with Fisher Davis, two pillars. Still unable to get a shot off. And the two goes to work again, but front irons it no good. And this guy will fly. Saban Lee all the way to the hole. Look at that move. And that's where Vanderbilt can score is in transition. But how do you get in transition if you can't get stops? It has to let, they have to let their defense Ignite their offense. Freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. Ignited his teammates the other night in a win against UNC Asheville. They have a foul away from the ball. Lee's mother went to law school here, and that's how Coach Drew said he was able to recruit Saban to Vanderbilt. Had offers from Louisville, Stanford, Florida State, and Nebraska. As Obina, Educa Obina for Vanderbilt commits his third foul very quickly to start the second half, and that doesn't draw any iron off the hands of McLaughlin. The best thing that could happen to Vanderbilt was the halftime horn, just go into USC's locker room or let USC go to the locker room and try to cool off a little bit from three. 
good look from Lachance to Roberson, and Vanderbilt gets a shot off and regains the lead. Three other oh. way. Matu can do it all. Matu has added that part of his game. The same way Boatwright has learned to go inside, Metu has learned how to go outside. In the corner. The chance into Roberson, kicks it out. Open look after the extra pass, and Fisher Davis's three is off the mark. Stewart, who was quiet after the first few minutes, but lays it in there, and USC on top. Stewart has really allowed his three-point threat to let him curl these screens that he's getting. Vanderbilt trailing too much. He's had way too many easy looks at the rim. Lead now growing to four. Lee looking for spacing inside. A chance penetrates and scores. Senior from Brookfield, Wisconsin, has had a terrific career for the Commodores. Matthews kick ball off the foot, and they're going to say it stays with the Trojans. When you're guarding a shooter, they say stay attached to the hip. Well, if you fight over the top, there must be some help if he curls that screen. That's not all Fisher Davis. That's on the help defender. And then Riley Chance doing a nice job of penetrating that zone with the dribble. Don't just stand around and swing it side to side, waiting for the defense to open. Make something happen. Laughlin out to Matthews. And the Trojans will reset their offense with five on the shot clock. Tough shot in the paint is up and good by McLaughlin. Tough as nails. I mean, this kid is as good as advertised. McLaughlin, a three-year captain, graduated in three years. He and Stewart, part of the first recruiting class of infield, so they're four-year guys, the first multiple four-year guys U.S. has had since 04-05. Baptiste with the extra pass, no foul called. No, there is one late. A whistle there as there was some contact made on Roberson. Be on Matthews, his second. Chance. Running out of time here, barely gets it in the lead. And Stewart learned his lesson. That open three in the corner, Vanderbilt got out of their out of bounds set in the first half. They had it covered up with Fisher Davis. The chance again with a shot inside, but it's a little short. Rebounded by Roberson. Roberson hard to the bucket is fouled. And Bryce Drew wants goaltending. Looks like they're not going to make that call. It'll be a two-shot free throw opportunity for Vandy when we return. Up four here in Memorial Gym in Nashville. One of the more unique places to play a college basketball game. Dane Bradshaw certainly knows about that from his time playing against the Doors. You see where the shot clock used to be located as early as last season. John Calipari working the bench for Kentucky. Now the shot clock above the rim. Big difference in terms of your sight lines this season. Yeah, the Commodore's making it easy on visiting teams these days, man. I mean, that was one of the hardest things as a player. You see the coaches on the opposite sidelines where the coach's box is now is different. But the hardest thing for me as a player, you're dribbling out front, and that shot clock was so low, it was hard to locate it as time was winding down. You'd look up, you're in the wrong place. Then you'd look where it was, and a big seven-footer's in your way. It'd take you three seconds to figure out where the clock was. Is there any disadvantage to sitting over here on the baseline, Dane? You know, they, they've allowed the extended the coach's box to be able to come up a little bit. They started that last year as Fisher Davis knocks down the three. 
So it does help, but for me as a player, it was harder finding the shot clock than it was listening to my coach behind me. And again, they, they, they've made some adjustments that uh, this is still a tough place to play, but those were a couple of the unique things that aren't quite as challenging anymore for a visiting team. Oh, right, goes to work inside on Baptiste and a tough bucket off the glass. And you mentioned Fisher Davis is three. He has 13, Boat right now with six. Going back to that photo of the old shot clock, I can tell you the only people not complaining are the fans that had seats staring right into the back of that shot clock that now have a clear view of the court. Riverson in the corner. This is Larry Austin Jr. back out to Lachance. Lachance drives to the bucket and it's blocked out of bounds with two shots, two seconds left on the shot clock. Jonah Matthews with that block there. So Vanderbilt's going to have to get a shot off in a hurry. Fisher Davis at the buzzer. Remember when I said he makes it look easy? That was that effortless sweet stroke he had. One point game. Two. Back out to McLaughlin. Matu sets his feet. Turnaround shot. Too strong and going up to get the rebound is Fisher Davis. Vanderbilt will push. Austin is fouled on the reach around. If you're USC and you know the shot clock's winding down two seconds, you can't let Vanderbilt's most lethal weapon get the ball. Terrific pump fake. Get into the lane, Fisher Davis. Nice job, and then on the other end, a really good defensive possession by Vanderbilt. They got burned on it in the first half when they double teamed the post. This time, right with a chance, slid over, fronted the big man, discouraged that pass. Laughlin commits his second foul. Fisher Davis with 15 points to lead all scores with the inbounds pass. And has it again. In and out. Positive sign for Coach Bryce Drew is they've limited turnovers other than the opening possession. They're actually getting shots up as a result. Obviously, they are back in this game. Look at this acrobatic move by Jonah Matthews to the rim. Sophomore from Santa Monica, California. The brother Jordan played for Gonzaga in the national championship game. Shows off some talent there. Three point game again. around by Roberson and a foul before the shot. How about this move, move baseline by Matthews just a second ago for SC? Well, he's not just a shooter, he's a driver. You've got to cut off that baseline if you're Fisher Davis. Use the sideline as a defender. Too easy. Vanderbilt's been pretty solid defensively, not one of their better possessions there. I mentioned his brother. He transferred over from Cal to play one season for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Came so close to winning a national championship, falling to Roy Williams and the Tar Heels. In the paint, Roberson gives it up. Austin gets trapped. Shuffled his feet, got caught, and that's the 14th turnover for Vanderbilt. Kosovic back into the game. And his shot is off the mark, rebounded by Baptiste. And a chance to Roberson wants to drive on Boatwright and a foul call. Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll have Thinking Out Loud presented by Regions Bank with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk football and want your participation via social media and live call-ins throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. I'll tell you what, Dane Brookshaw, you get to be the first person on SEC Network to pick who wins the Iron Bowl on Saturday. Who you got? <laughs> oh, yeah. You want me to throw myself out there like I that? I do. Oh, gosh. I can't go. 
I can't ever go on the record of picking against Alabama. That's the easy one, right? I mean, but you know what? I'm more concerned about at Alabama. Colin Sexton and some of the superstars <laughs> they have down him. there. I mean, golly, I, I'm a basketball guy. I'm yes, not keeping up with, with the Iron Bowl and all the other stuff. It's awesome. It's exciting. But I can tell you this. Whenever anybody talks about, well, it's just a football school, this or that. Look, I was at Tennessee, a football school. It helps to be a football school. When you're a recruit coming in town, you want to go to football games. Both can go coexist at schools and both benefit from one from one another. This so-called football school in front of us is ranked 10th in the country ahead of the Pac-12 South champs that are ranked 11th. And they lead by two against the Commodores. Losing control of the basketball there was Matthews as Fisher Davis got a hand on it. And he's whistled for his third foul. Something to monitor with 12.28 to go in the game. It's the second team foul on Bandy in this half. Spinning around is Matu, and it's too strong. And the chance look for a second like he wanted to push it. Kicks it outside. Austin gives up the three. And the two won't go in. Baptiste fights for it inside. No foul called. Rebounded by Thornton. Three on the way, no good by Matthews. And Vanderbilt saves it. Lachance with the great save. Austin does not have numbers. Now Fisher Davis for three. Vanderbilt with the lead back with 11.45 to go. Fifth lead change of the game. Two shot too strong, and a foul call. And a technical call now, too. If Vanderbilt can get stops, they'll get in transition. Nobody better to find than Fisher Davis. Doors back on top. Vanderbilt has regained the lead. Let's take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Too many studs on the court for both teams. We can't just leave it at Fisher Davis. Brilliant shot for him. But on the other end, USC, Matthews takes it to the rack. The up and under avoids the big man, uses the rim as a protector, lays it in. Gone back and forth all half. Man. The Trojans had a one-point lead going to the break, but both teams shooting well tonight. Vanderbilt near 56% while the Trojans have improved to 42% after a cold start. Well, this reminds me a little bit of Kentucky, honestly. I mean, you looked at Kentucky where they struggled against some really good mid-major teams in their first couple games. You thought, man, it could be trouble against a team like Kansas. And Vanderbilt came off to a little bit of a sluggish start early on in their season against the quality mid-majors. You think, oh, USC's in town. This is going to be trouble. But they have hung in there with the Trojans and this is a Trojans team that many are picking as a final four sleeper type program and well deserved with the accolades and the talent that Andy Enfield has brought and kept in the LA area. Rakosovic commits the personal foul and then the technical foul and that's why you saw Fisher Davis shooting free throws alone and now Vandy keeps the basketball. And they get that man behind him melting back. This team will just keep getting better. Led the conference in steals last season. High IQ player to compliment McLaughlin in the backcourt. Off the curl, Fisher Davis, it's good. Mandy's lead is six. And a quick whistle on Larry Austin Jr. Fisher Davis curled around that screen. You weren't even sure he had it in his hands good enough. Got it settled on his way up. He's not going to show you a lot of motion, not going to show you a lot of flair. But he is in a zone right now for the Vanderbilt Commodores. He has 23 points. And this man, Benny Boatwright, had a career high 28 on Monday. He gets fouled. This has been a group effort on Boatwright. You know, they've stayed in front of him. He's not an explosive athlete. He's going to put his head down, try to get past you and use his size to his advantage. 
But Vanderbilt has just stayed in front of them, forced contested shots throughout this ball game. Watch out. That two somehow gets free and finishes with a flush. Swinging around, there's a foul away from the ball. Well, on the dribble handoff here, Matu, I mean, he, he just tricks them into thinking it's a handoff. Both players go with one guy. It's pretty simple. Baptiste has to stay at home, stay solid. That's the eighth team foul on USC, second on Shaquan Aaron, and Bandy's in the one and one. Fisher Davis has 24 points tonight. That last basket by Metu is his easiest of the night. Five for 16, a guy who was most improved player in the conference last year. Just continued to work in the offense. Technical foul now. It looks like double tech between Rovers and Boatwright. They've been barking at each other throughout the game. I believe the officials just trying to assess double technicals to get them to calm down. Brian Shea, the official, has had enough. I'll tell you this, not, not that I'm condoning getting a technical foul, but the scouting report on Vanderbilt in years past has been really good team, deadly from three, but if you take the fight to them, you can out-tough them. That has changed in the past year or so under Bryce Drew, but I think they've also taken on the identity of Jeff Roberson, who's done it all for this team, a senior leader, tough guy, brings his hard hat every game. The lead is six as Thornton's scoop shot is no good. Davis, dangerous pass, and somehow the chance gets it back for the three and makes it. Trojans went for the interception, and it was in the hands of one of the best three-point shooters in America. All the way to the hole, virtually untouched is McLaughlin. lead seven with under 10 minutes to go. Trojans trail, trail by five against the Bison in North Dakota State with under 10 to go on Monday. Davis is feeling it tonight. He has 28 points. Commodore's up 10 and boat right answers. Benny Boat right now in double digits with 11. Oh. Extra pass from Roberson to Baptiste out of bounds. Got a game of inches right where you thought it was about to be a turnover going the other way. Loose ball. One of the cleanest looks the going to get all night. With the crowd already on the edge of their seats, ready to explode. Fisher Davis gets them off their feet with yet another three. 28 points, hindered by a bum ankle to start the season. Boy, he is looking like 100% and then some tonight. It's still football season for me, Dane. He tried to jump the route there. Yeah, he did jump the route. But then you see USC on the other end answer with a three. Again, two programs that set three-point records at their respective schools last season. So we knew he had a shootout. And a chance shot everywhere but in, rebounded by SC. If you're at infield, I mean, this is why you schedule this game. You want your team to be battle tested on the road in a really tough place to play against a talented team like the Commodores. See what your team's made of. And hands a boat right over in the corner. The three, no good by McLaughlin, rebounded by Roberson. Doors up seven with just over eight minutes remaining. And Bryce Drew will call timeout. And we'll take the break with them. 8 10 to go in Nashville. The doors clinging to the lead. Wednesday, we're 
We'll have Fort Wayne taking on the seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats at Rupp Arena, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on the SEC Network. Also, it's streaming live on the ESPN app. John Calipari and the Cats against Fort Wayne. Every single year you hear him this time of year say, we're young, we're young, we're young. Well, he's right. They're always young, but this team especially is inexperienced. Young and talented, though, and it's always fun to watch how he gets his team to mature and develop throughout the course of the season. This is going to be the year, a year, though, with Kentucky where they might not dominate every game or the SEC when you have the town of the SEC and guys like Matthew Fisher Davis at Vanderbilt He's not putting young. up numbers like that. <laughs> But uh, I think for Kentucky, they've already shown they can play with anybody in the country. Now, if they don't show up and play as hard as they can, anybody in the country can play with them as well, and that's part of the growing up process for them. Roberson tries to get it to the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Off-balance shot. That was a tough one, rebounded by Matu. Well, credit to Matthews there. He chased him around that screen. Didn't give him any space. Draws contact and gets the bucket. I love it by McLaughlin. He settled for a three in the corner earlier. He could have taken the jump shot. Did not want to settle. Went in there. Could have taken the shot there. Said, nope, I'm going to take it to him. The hoop, the harm, and the foul. Vandy's up five with 7.47 to go against the 10th-ranked USC Trojans. Bryce Drew, known for his great recruiting, got his biggest signee yet from right here in the Nashville area. Darius Garland, one of the top players in the country from Brentwood Academy, decides to sign with Vanderbilt over the likes of Kentucky, Duke, Kansas, and others. Well, if you look at how Andy Enfield has built his program, it's been by protecting the home turf with the stars in the L.A. area and no bigger star in this area or the country for that matter than Darius Garland. And when you ask Bryce Drew about him, I'll uh, I'll, I'll joke with him a little bit here. His eyes light up like he's blushing about some cute girl in school. I mean, he says Darius Garland is such a talented player, can handle the ball, take over a game as a scorer or a passer. And as he said earlier this week, a program changing type commitment. Laughlin completes the three point play. That man, Austin, just committed his third foul. The lead is down to four. Austin kicks it in the corner. Roberson trying to drive. Turn around shot too strong and rebounded by Boatwright. SC closed the first half on a 15-0 run to grab the halftime lead. That's who inside and a tough shot goes in and he shows off the guns. That's just a special talent right there. Roberson did everything right. Get the post position far out away from the basket. Force a tough two. That two, just a special, special player that will be playing at the next level. Foul away from the basket on Jonah Matthews. The difference in the second half to me, uh, we knew the three-point shooting was going to be there for Vanderbilt, but it was can they take care of the basketball? And just two turnovers here in this second half. It's not that they had an insurmountable lead to overcome, only down one at the half, but... They got a nice halftime speech and a chance to correct their first half mistakes and stop that 15-0 run that USC had leading into the half. Three fouls on Matthews now after that whistle. Fisher Davis throws the lead back to four. He's got 30. The glass too strong, fight for the ball, and it's a foul. Baptiste, this is how you get playing time right here, staying in the game, building a solid wall. That is textbook post defense for Vanderbilt. The Commodores don't have big men at the five spot that are going to get a bunch of highlights or a bunch of postseason awards. But they got to be able to have their role played the way Baptiste just did on the post defense. Double bonus for Vanderbilt from here on in after Chemezi committed his third foul. Jerry Baptiste comes off the bench. 
And there were times in the last game where Vanderbilt, they went small with Roberson playing the five. And if you're Baptiste, you got to take that personal. Like, wait a minute. No, no, no. We're, we're going to be better when I'm on the court at the five, and right now they are defensively. Memorial Jim trying to come alive. Six with just over six to go. Boat right for three. No good and rebounded by Fisher Davis. Well, that was a pretty play. I saw that run with Kevin Stallings here at Vanderbilt for guys like Dan Cage at the four. Nice open look for Boat Rock. Oh. Couldn't knock it down. Chance makes a couple of moves, but shuffled his feet. Speed, agility, and quickness for the senior from Brookfield, Wisconsin. Three on the way, way too strong from McLaughlin, and another rebound for Fisher Davis. He's got eight. Austin back to Roberson. Too strong, and the rebound goes to the Trojans. McLaughlin gives way to Stewart. Now Boatwright tries to make a move on Roberson, and a foul is called. And it'll bring up two shots. USC needs more of that. Getting Boatwright into post-up position within 10 feet of the basket to where he doesn't have so much room to cover to try to get all the way to the rack. Roberson, that's three on him. Boat right already known as a special player, a great shooter at 6'10", stretched the court, but last year really hindered by injuries. This year, he's healthy, but with health comes better conditioning than you've ever had. It's allowed him to be a more explosive type player than they've seen in the past. Kind of a quiet night so far for him. Just 12 points after 28 six days ago. Five-point lead for Vandy. Austin looking for space, kicks it out. Under 10 on the shot clock. Inside, Baptiste gets fouled. Out of the chance has played some point guard for this team in the past, and he's showing you he can do it all with this nice dish. And Baptiste continuing to give great minutes for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Second foul on Elijah Stewart. Sends Jerry back to the line. points tonight for the sophomore who's averaging five points and five rebounds so far this season. And he's right at his average and he gives the doors a six point lead. McLaughlin in traffic out to Stewart for three. Got it. Now tied for fourth all time in USC history with three pointers made, and it's a three point game. Stewart has been quiet all night, but when you got a guy like McLaughlin, you have to stay ready when the open shot comes. Beautiful drive and find by McLaughlin. Tied Gabe Pruitt with 179 career threes. Austin loses control, but the foul will be called. As it goes on, McLaughlin with 4.24 to go. And that's his third. So it sends Larry Austin Jr. back to the charity stripe. He's two for four from there tonight. These are critical free throws down the stretch of a game if Vanderbilt's going to hold off the Trojans. And he's 
now three for six, and Vanderbilt has a two possession lead. USC's best offense has been ball spin with McLaughlin. There it is. Keep the ball in his hands. Let him operate, operate off the ball screen. If it's not him, try to get Pot Boatwright posted up with better position down low. McLaughlin now with 20, and the lead's down to two. And the corner to Roberson trying to work on Boatwright, and Boatwright takes it away from him. Back he somehow gets it back. Lachance gives up the three now for two and it's a four-point game again. Good shot selection from Riley, and it's a 70 to 66 lead with just over 3.30 to go. This is where Vanderbilt went cold in the first half. McLaughlin again to the hole, this time contested, but Matu there for the follow. Inside shots lead to inside rebounds. Again, the ball screen action with McLaughlin. Even when he doesn't make it, that's a nice offensive rebounding opportunity for big guys like Matu. Two with 13 points tonight. Austin out to the chance. Just six on the shot clock. There's too much driven on this possession for Vanderbilt. Mr. Davis gets bailed out on a foul with one second on the shot clock by Jonah Matthews. Vanderbilt up 70 to 68 with 251 left in Memorial Gym. As you can tell right there, this has been a fun one tonight. Vandy clinging to a two-point lead over the 10th ranked team in the country. Dane Bradshaw, I've been trained in November to say November matters on the gridiron. You say it matters on the hardwood. November basketball <laughs> matters. If you don't believe me, just watch this game. For a team like USC, many predict to be in the Final Four, getting a big-time road test right now against a tough Vanderbilt Commodore team. And for Vanderbilt, these are the types of games and opportunities that got them into, into the NCAA tournament last year. They didn't have a great record. They had some losses they wish they could have had back but they made the most of these types of opportunities, and this is the type of game that could get you in or out come March. What's the most important thing Vanderbilt must do to close this game? They couldn't close the first half. You gotta get shots on the offensive end. I mean, that's been the key to this second half is they've taken care of the basketball, and right now they're in the double bonus. Either get a shot up or get fouled while you're on offense. And with one second to go on the shot clock, Jonah Matthews committed that foul on Fisher Davis, who makes one of two free throws. It's a three-point game. Most of these scouts came here tonight to check out USC's talent. I think they're taking some Fisher Davis notes. This is one of the guys they're watching, Benny Boatwright, and there's a whistle before the shot. And I like the fact that they're forcing the issue a little bit with Boatwright. It's hadn't been a pretty game for USC, but as it comes down to the wire, get the ball in the hands of your two best players, McLaughlin or Boatwright. It's the fourth foul. Charge to Roberson. And in the one and one, Boatwright hits the first. One shot, man. It's a one-point game. Larry Austin Jr. off the bench playing point guard in crunch time for Bryce Drew here. Lachance has been running the point some. Gives way to Fisher Davis and it's too strong. Rebounded by McLaughlin. And he'll push it despite not having numbers. One on three and he finishes it. Larry Austin Jr. charged with his fourth foul after this move by McLaughlin. USC is so dangerous in transition. That time off the rebound, McLaughlin just takes it coast to coast himself. Somebody has to stop the ball earlier than that. And this is where USC has the edge, not just in talent, but towards the end of the game, experience at the point guard position. 
Nobody in the country has it as good as USC and Jordan McLaughlin. He has 22 points. The Trojans regain the lead. Wednesday, Danes in Lexington as Fort Wayne takes on the seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats at Rupp Arena, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on the SEC Network, also streaming live on the ESPN app. I'll be there Saturday to watch Lamar Jackson in Louisville take on the Kentucky Wildcats. We were just talking about McLaughlin, who has 22 points tonight. Again, a three-year captain for this team. Part of the first recruiting class for Andy Enfield. And he has shouldered an extra burden with Melton not being eligible right now to play. They hope to get him back in the very near future, but they're going to rely on him even more than ever in the backcourt. Trying to complete the three-point play. McLaughlin is able to do it, and the Trojans' lead is two. But if you're Vanderbilt, I think you feel pretty good with USC staying in this man-to-man -man because they were able to run their stuff and get a good shutoff in that last possession. The chance. In the corner to Roberson, the one-handed floater, no good, but he's fouled. And that's the key. If you're guarding Vanderbilt, if you let them run their stuff, swing the ball side to side, they're going to find a way to get in the lane, get shooters open. Roberson with a nice job. Looking for his teammates, nobody open. Takes it hard to direct. Any boat right now with four fouls. Look at the free throw difference tonight. Andy now 16 of 23 from the charity strike. Tied in. McLaughlin for three. Rebounded by Fisher Davis. His ninth board of the game. Same play last. They cheated on it. Skip pass. Austin. Jones waves and Batiste. He can't finish. But that's a foul on Boatwright. Beautiful skip pass by Fisher Davis. The same set they ran the previous play. USC cheats up. They cheat up as they try to put two on the chance and a nice job getting the ball to Baptiste. Benny Boatwright has fouled out of the basketball game with 1.16 to go. One of the hottest players in the country right now to start this early basketball season. Vanderbilt did their job trying to make it tough on him. He played with great effort. Great intensity, just wasn't his night. A lot of that had to do with what Vanderbilt did rather than what he wasn't able to do. But I will tell you, Fisher Davis with those strong rebounds, if you told me somebody on this court was going to have 31 points, nine rebounds tonight, I would have said it was Boatwright. Fisher Davis, star shining bright right now. Shaquan Aaron will have to take his spot as you see the frustration on Boatwright's face as Baptiste makes the first free throw. from the line time. He has been proving himself reliable recently. A big man at the end of the game knocking him down. Two-point lead for the Doors. This is Matu. Working on Baptiste, and it's short, but a foul call. Who's... against Baptiste, and it's his second. So now the Trojans are also in the double bonus. And these will be the first free throws attempted by Metu, Metu tonight. He is four for eight from the line this season. Oh, 
Wright can do is watch. Shots by Chemezi Metu. Tied at 75 with exactly one minute left. Chance tries to draw contact and does. We mentioned earlier in Bryce Drew has plenty of confidence with the chance at the point guard, and here he is at the end of the game. Biggest possession of the night. Put the hand, put the ball in the hands of a senior leader. The chance coming through huge. Third foul on Stewart, three-point play, the old-fashioned way by one of the best shooters in the country beyond the arc. He's got 16, timeout, Southern California. Vanderbilt can spread you out with shooters, and what can that do? It can lead to open lanes. Baptiste has been the unsung hero all night. Watch how he clears out the lane with the post up of Matu, leaving it open, taking away the shot blocker so the chance can finish easy at the rim. Six first year players are on this team, but there's no question the heart and soul of it is Matthew Fisher Davis and that man, Riley Lachance. Jeff Roberson added to that list too. The three seniors must have a huge year Vanderbilt's going to get back to the NCAA yeah. tournament. And what a story Lachance has been. I followed him his whole career. He comes into the SEC as a freshman and just knocks it out of the park. One of the top freshmen in the league, scoring on anybody and everybody, and then has the slump of slumps his sophomore season. But last year came back with authority under Bryce Drew's leadership, giving him more confidence. And now he's one of the top senior guards in this conference. 94th career start for Lachance tonight. What does USC have to do here without Boat right on the floor? Real easy ball screens to McLaughlin, let him operate. They're going to go with Matu down low. Matu somehow gets the shot off after the ball was almost stolen away and a foul called against Baptiste. The luxury that infield has it's being able to throw it down into Metu, knowing that if he gets fouled, we saw his stroke at the free throw line. Infield, no shooting. He teaches his players the correct form. Two big men out there on either team. Proving it from the charity strike. First free throw rolls in. It's a two-point game. And really, since Boatwright went out of the game, they were trying so hard to post him up. And with him fouled out, last two possessions, they dumped it right down in to Metu. Chemezi, their go-to guy on the block, makes it a one-point game with 38 seconds left. Now, do you foul here with your SC, or do you let Vandy play? Oh, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous pass. pass. Oh, my to goodness. Austin, who beats the defense! The touchdown pass from 94 feet. You talk about some stones on Rock Robinson. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just because it was open doesn't mean I would have thrown it. Big time pass. And now here's a three on the way by McLaughlin to tie it up. Jordan McLaughlin has 26. That's a career high for him. Tied at 80. Vandy will hold for one shot. Look for the same play, the ball screen with a chance. See if Baptiste can screen off Metu down low again. Same play, Xavier transfers. Austin's going to be coming on up. Here's Lachance spinning in the lane. Shot up, no good, and we're going to overtime. Lachance held for one last look. Spun a couple of times. It hits the front iron after the big three from Jordan McLaughlin. We've got more basketball. 80 to 80 as we start the extra session. Vanderbilt tried the dangerous long court pass here, the baseball pass. 
to inbounds things. Up one with the ball, had everybody holding their breath in this stadium. What a pass by Roberson, of course, to finish. And one senior makes a big play, now another senior. Vanderbilt has been going under ball screens all night long, and McLaughlin has been able to make them pay from the perimeter. His previous career high was against Colorado, scoring 25 points two years ago. And then you had this last look by LaChance. Yeah, it didn't quite get the same look that they wanted to on a couple of possessions previously where LaChance was able to get all the way to the basket. Credit USC with solid defense to get them into overtime. But you talk about some big time plays by big time playmakers, whether it was LaChance with the AM one, Roberson's pass, Metu's free throws, and then this guy McLaughlin, senior point guard of all senior point guards making a huge play on the road in a tough, tough environment. We need both right out out of the game with 14 points not available. As we go to overtime, as you said earlier today, Andy Enfield told us this is what November is all about, to see what you're made of, to go across the country on the road against a really good team in a hostile environment. Well, he's got his wish tonight. And if Vanderbilt is able to come through, it's another big non-conference win for Bryce Drew, who made a living off of them last year. Great atmosphere here tonight in Memorial Gym on Ingram Court. Baptiste and Metu. In the middle and Vandy gets it first. Taylor Zarzer, Dane Bradshaw here in Nashville watching the 10th ranked Trojans have to go to an extra frame against Vanderbilt. Roberson for three. No good. Very well defended by USC that time. Vanderbilt ran that set at least three times the last ten possessions. USC, that's the best they've defended it yet. Swinging it around the perimeter to this man, Jordan McLaughlin, who's had the big night. And that three's on the way and in. McLaughlin with five of them tonight, and he's got 29. SC up three. Fisher Davis at the other end, it's short. All the way to the bucket. Gets the step and USC's up five. 31 points for the senior from California. And timeout's been called by Bryce Drew. 340 to go in overtime. SC comes up with the first five points. USC with the first five points of overtime up 85-80. Bryce Drew calls timeout with 340 to go. Chance off the curl to Roberson. The difference between Vanderbilt's playmakers and USC is they just don't do as much off the bounce the way McLaughlin can. They're trying to run staggered streams to get an open look. USC's athletes and defenders chasing them around everywhere. Five on the shot clock, off balance by Austin. Too strong. Baptiste gets the rebound, clears it. Lachance, extra pass to Fisher Davis. And again, Vandy's going to have to go back out quarter court. I think Fisher Davis has to take that shot. You're only going to get so good of a look against this type of defense in the half court set. Austin, nowhere to go with the ball. Baptiste bails him out. A chance with three on the shot clock off balance. No good. Incredible defense by the Trojans. And the bottom line is USC has McLaughlin and Vanderbilt doesn't. He has the basketball right now. He has 31 points tonight. 
Same set, little weave action, ball screen with Metu. Nice job by Fisher Davis breaking it up. Fisher Davis tries to get a step on him, and it's no good. USC with their first turnover of the second half and or overtime. But it does not lead to a Vanderbilt basket with 2-10 left. Mandy has not scored in overtime. And SC will call timeout. Let's take a look how he got here. It's been all McLaughlin. Ice in his veins. They have not been able to stop him all night. Where do they go? Under the screen, over the screen. If he wants to shoot it, he shoots it. If he wants to drive it, he drives it. Vanderbilt just has had no resistance on the ball screen defense with McLaughlin running the show at point for USC. Hunt just beyond the arc, too. And everyone in the building knows he's going to be in control of the basketball. Well, in the two buckets that we just saw in overtime, it's one thing if he makes the three, which Vanderbilt has decided to go under the screen, as we've mentioned. But it is inexcusable for him to get all the way to the basket when you go under the screen. And that's where Vanderbilt must be better. And it's not going to change if I'm Andy Enfield, even though there was a turnover in the last possession. It's just more the same. Keep the ball screen action with McLaughlin and Metu and let your best players go to work in a two-man game. And he's used to distributing the basketball. It is single-game SC record with 16 assists a couple of years ago with 31 points tonight. They try to catch Vanderbilt on the back door pass with that lead action, but they got to find a way to get back in the clock in time. There you go. Now the two to the bucket gets free, and the lead is seven. It's the largest so lead athletic. of the game for USC. I mean, at that size, 6'11", you should not be able to spin around a smaller defender with that type of speed that Roberson has. Austin spins a couple of times, puts it up and in, and gets fouled. First bucket of overtime for Vandy. Vanderbilt just really struggling to get anything off the bounce. Austin Jr. trying to change that for them. Vanderbilt in the overtime just hasn't been able to run their set, their staggered screens and their motion to get the open threes. They're going to have to make some one-on-one -on -one type plays at the basket. They can't complete the three-point play. It's a five-point lead. Any boat right with a smile on his face, fouling out of the game, cheering on his teammates. That dude wants to shoot it, makes a move on Baptiste, and look how strong he goes to the bucket. He's got 23. Unbelievable. Big man catches in the high post. Good decision maker and a guy that infield can trust with the ball in his hands. He back to seven. Austin coast to coast has all four of Vandy's points in overtime. Just 55 seconds left. Bryce Drew asking his Vanderbilt players to pressure the basketball. It hasn't happened left with, yet with 15 seconds on the shot clock. This one too strong. Fisher Davis gives it up to Austin. 30 seconds left. Austin to Baptiste who scores. It's a three-point game. And a quick foul. I don't like the shot by Matu. I know he's added it to his game, but Vanderbilt has not been able to stop you going inside the past couple of possessions. No need to settle for that jumper. Nice job by Austin Jr. getting in the lane, trying to make something happen for he or his teammates. Richard Davis commits his fourth foul. And the Trojans go back to the line where they're 11 of 12 tonight. McLaughlin's three for three. Jordan's 9 for 12 at the charity stripe on the season. And these are Andy Enfield in college type numbers tonight, 12 of 13. He shot 92% as a player at Johns Hopkins. His team is 13 of 14. Like you just need dribble handoff or something to get Fisher Davis. It's time for a three. Can't get a shot off yet. Lachance will throw one up there. Too strong. Fisher Davis fires it back out to Austin, and then it turned over. 
four seconds left, and that might do it. USC is going to escape Nashville by beating the Vanderbilt Commodores, who had plenty of chances tonight, but they commit their 16th turnover there. This is exactly what you wanted if you're Andy Anfield. A tough road environment, overtime situation, crowds into it. Opposing players are going off like Fisher Davis. But you have senior stars like McLaughlin, the quarterback, heart and soul of this team. We're able to pull out victories. And this is what makes them a Final Four contender. Price is going to call timeout with his team down six with four seconds to go in the game. They're headed to New York City for Thanksgiving. They'll play Virginia on Thursday and the winner of Rhode Island or Seton Hall on Friday. Meanwhile, these Trojans will spend the night here in Nashville and fly back to Los Angeles. Tomorrow they host Lehigh back in L.A. on Wednesday. And they do play Texas A&M. I know you think that's a huge game next week. Oh, absolutely. SEC fans will see the Aggies get another shot at USC where you will see more NBA talent on the court when you look at guys like Robert Williams. And the Enfield's team will be tested throughout the winter leading into conference play. But I'll tell you, in overtime tonight, it's not like this is the greatest defensive game they've ever played. I mean, 86 points, you're giving up 50% from the field. But in overtime, the way they denied the wings and forced Vanderbilt to beat them from two, not from three. Austin Jr. made a couple plays, but not nearly enough for what Vanderbilt needed. And to do it in crunch time without Batman, too, says a lot about the leadership on this basketball team. Kenny Boatwright's one of the best players in college basketball. USC picked to finish second in the Pac-12 behind Arizona's in the top five. And the Trojans will stay in the top ten with the win tonight. The chance at the buzzer is good. And USC beats Vanderbilt 93 to 89. Great game here in Nashville tonight between Bryce Drew and Andy Enfield. We could do this again, Dane. <laughs> we got Great our game worth on this between one, the Pac-12 and the Southeastern Conference tonight. Great working with you. St. Travels there to Lexington. USC 93, Vandy 89. Up next, LSU at Tennessee football. Thanks to Brett Walensky and our entire crew in Nashville tonight. For Dane Bradshaw, I'm Taylor Zarzer. You've been watching SEC Basketball in Nashville.